All right, if y'all would, turn with me today to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 6 today. If you have your picture there in your seat, this is what we're going to be talking about today. And if anybody's outside and needs a picture, Rent's one, I mean, not Red, uh, Roy is wandering around with the pictures outside as well. But this is talking about the Devil's Fortress. I want you to imagine, just for a moment, an ancient city. An ancient city that is being attacked, and you have a fortress. You have a stronghold to be able to go into to fight against whoever is attacking you. Whoever is advancing against you, that counterattack there. So that ancient city, I want you to imagine now the devil's fortress. That stronghold, that inside of the devil's fortress is the devil. His demons, those fallen angels that have rejected God and are following Satan. And inside the devil's fortress, you also have the lost. The lost. Many people, many people inside of the devil's fortress. And the devil's fortress is constructed. It's made of satanic and human wisdom. That's the bricks that builds it up. This is the fortress that the devil, the demons, and the lost people are inside of. Satanic and human wisdom. Lots of things from there. Philosophies, thoughts, ideas, false religions, false teachers. And inside of this fortress, they also have weapons. One particular is a flaming arrow. A flaming arrow to shoot out of that fortress, out of that stronghold. This flaming arrow may be an arrow of temptation. This flaming arrow may be an arrow of doubt, of lies. All the different things that the devil tries to throw our ways. And the lost people that are here in the fortress, they think they're in a good position. They think they're safe where they're at right now, behind all of their human wisdom. The satanic wisdom there. They feel like the structure is sound and that they're behind it. But they don't realize they didn't choose here. They're trapped. They're prisoners inside of the devil's fortress. They have not accepted Christ. They have not come to him. They are trapped right there. And the mission inside of the devil's fortress is twofold. First, it is to attack the Christians. That's what those flaming arrows are doing. Because the Christians are advancing God's kingdom there on the battlefield. And those flaming arrows of temptation, doubt, and lies are flying down upon them. The second mission of the devil's fortress is to keep the lost in there. To keep them confused. To keep them thinking that they are safe where they are at. That's the mission of the devil's fortress. But it's a losing battle. We know from God's word that God's kingdom has come. It's going forward. And at the end of the ages, the devil's fortress will completely be torn down. All satanic human wisdom, everything in it will completely be destroyed. And all those found in the devil's fortress will be thrown into hell for eternity. That's the reality before us. And you see, the reason they're inside of the devil's fortress, they're inside of this stronghold here, is because on the battlefield, we have God. On the battlefield, we have the angels. On the battlefield, we have the Christians. And they're advancing God's kingdom. And they are led by the head of the army. Who's the head of the Lord's army? But Jesus Christ. He's pointing to, to where to go. He's giving them commands of where to go. He's telling them to watch out for these flaming arrows that are coming their way. And when Jesus ascended back to heaven, He had told the disciples that He wasn't going to leave them alone. That he's going to send the Comforter, the Helper, the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Our Commander is inside of us, giving us direction, telling us where to go and how to fight against the devil's fortress and the attacks that are coming from him. And we need to make sure that we're always listening to our Commander. We also need to make sure that we are communicating with our Commander in prayer, continuing to listen to where he's telling us to go. And spiritual armor is so needed. We're walking out there with these flaming arrows flying everywhere. We need to be equipped. We need to be ready. Spiritual armor. The belt of truth. In ancient times, the soldiers, the Roman soldiers would wear basically robes. And if they didn't pull those robes up when they were on the battlefield, they were going to trip up and fall down. And that's exactly what the belt of truth is doing. is pulling up all those loose ends that we have in our life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is putting on Jesus every day. 
as we walk into this battle. And when you have on that belt of truth, it is being, it's holding up the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. First and foremost, we put on Christ's righteousness when we accept Him. But you realize in obedience every day, we need to walk in holiness. Putting on that breastplate of righteousness. Because if you do not have the breastplate of righteousness on, your heart is exposed. And those flaming arrows that are coming down can injure you. They can injure you. The breastplate of righteousness. And having your feet shod with the gospel of peace. So the ancient soldiers, they would have basically like cleats on. Because they wanted to be able to stand firm as they went into battle. And this is the gospel of peace. The fact that we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. We need to remember that every day in our battle. We need to stand firm on the rock and take up the shield of faith. The shield of faith is so important. And this isn't talking about faith as in trusting in Jesus the first time when you become a Christian. This faith is talking about trusting your commander every day as you go through that battlefield. As you're approaching the devil's fortress there because it is a battle going on. And that shield of faith, you have to trust God every day. Pick up that shield of faith and it quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Because you remember those fiery darts, they're coming out of the devil's fortress every single day. Are you trusting God today? Have you taken up that shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one? Also, we need to have on the helmet of salvation. It's so important that our minds are protected, isn't it? Because one thing the devil continually wants to do is make us doubt about our salvation. Doubt about who we are in Jesus Christ. Doubt about the fact that Jesus is completely sufficient. Completely sufficient for our salvation. So every day put on that helmet of salvation and remember who you are in Christ. Who you are as a child of God. So you got your equipment on. But now you need a weapon. You need a weapon on the battlefield as you're going towards the devil's fortress. And that weapon is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That is God's wisdom fighting against the satanic and human wisdom of the world. Fighting against what that fortress is made out of, the devil's fortress. That's the stronghold, the shooting the flaming arrows at us as we go forward with God's Word. And the soldiers, as they're on the field, they call out with meekness and gentleness to the lost. They call them to come out. Here's the sword of the Spirit. Come out of the devil's fortress. And some do come that way. But these soldiers, we also need to be bold. We need to be willing to enter with boldness into the devil's fortress. To tear down those strongholds that are holding prisoners so many people in our lives. So many people in the world. The soldiers are calling out. And you realize the word, as we go towards the devil's fortress, the word, that sword of the Spirit is going to rescue some people from the devil's fortress. Others are going to be destroyed by it. That's heavy to think about. The Bible is either going to rescue you or destroy you. Have you made the choice to follow Christ, to be in the Lord's army? Or are you still inside of the devil's fortress thinking that you are safe there? Thinking that you are safe. The mission of those on the battlefield, God, the angel, and the Christians, is to advance the kingdom of God. The king of kings has already come once, hasn't he? And he's coming again to finish this battle. To tear down the devil's fortress. Advancing the kingdom with evangelism. You realize that's a, what we're doing going towards the devil's fortress. We're trying to save the lost. Evangelism. Telling people the good news and bringing the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And also discipleship. The fact that we're working together on the battlefield. Because you realize that if all of us try to do our own things on the battlefield... We're going to get hit by those arrows. And we're going to leave others in our, in our army exposed if we're not listening to the commander, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit guiding us as we're on the battlefield there. We need to listen to Christ every day. 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6. Paul was writing the church in Corinth. And the church in Corinth has had many problems before. False teachers in particular is a problem in the church of Corinth. They continued to fight. So 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6 says, Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some, who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Father, I thank you for your word today. And I pray as we look at it today to understand what these strongholds are. To understand what the devil's fortress is. That the lost are in there. And that we in the Lord's army have a mission to advance the kingdom. To go towards that fortress. And to fight. To be equipped. And I pray that you just open our hearts to what you want us to know today, Lord. And just help us to be obedient to you in all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Paul, in meekness and boldness. So Paul had a lot of accusations thrown at him from the false teachers. They said, hey, Paul's not really that good of a speaker. He's weak. He's obviously only bold when he's writing you your letters. He's wanting to chew you out with your letters, but he won't do it to you to your face. That's what the false teachers were accusing Paul of. And if you look at this text, Paul's got a little bit of element of sarcasm in the way he's, he's talking here too. He's like... You know, I'm coming to you with meekness and gentleness of Christ, which is true. He was being patient with them. Patient even in the midst of unfair treatment, which us as Christians, us on the battlefield, we need to be patient. And it's self-control. That's what meekness and gentleness really folds into is self-control, which is a fruit of the Spirit. Continuing to remember our commander and what he's telling us here. He was lenient at times, and he sent these harsh letters to him. He said, who... In presence, I'm lowly among you. So I've been lenient at times, but being absent and bold towards you. Okay, I've written you a harsh letter. I've told you the things you need to do that you need to listen up. But look at verse 2. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So he's talking about the apostles and the true teachers there. And he's like, do you want to make me bold? I don't think you want to make me bold. Get your act together before I come to your church. Because these false teachers are there, I'm coming for them. He's going to be bold. And if you think that Paul was never bold, except for in letters, in Galatians we find that when Peter had started to not eat with the Gentiles because of the Judaizers, those Jewish Christians that thought that they had to follow all the different laws of the Old Testament, when Peter was doing that, Paul says, I got up in his face. He confronted false teaching. He confronted false understanding at all times. So Paul could be bold, and he was bold. He was fighting against these false teachers. Now, how long has the church overlooked false teachers? How long have we allowed the world's wisdom, satanic wisdom, to creep into our churches? To creep into our churches. You look at the destruction of our country right now. It's because... We have not confronted the false teachers. It's because the churches have allowed worldly wisdom, satanic wisdom, to come inside. We need to fight. We need to fight. And he, Paul says here, these false teachers are fighting against him. Because he's teaching the truth, but the false teachers want their own control for various reasons. Perhaps it's just power to some degree. But here he says, who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So they're accusing Paul in the moral sense of walking in the flesh. That basically he is not holy and that the things he's doing is obvious that he's not a true Christian. Paul's like, no, this is not where it's at. Look here, verse 5. For though we walk in the flesh, he said, I'm not walking according to the flesh, but I do walk in the flesh. Physical. I live in the world. We live in the world. We're walking in the flesh as we go into that battlefield there. He says... For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. This is the key right here that we need to start understanding what it is. Being on that battlefield, going towards the devil's fortress, is that this war is not according to the flesh. This is a spiritual war. A spiritual war that we are fighting. It's a spiritual battle for men's souls. Those that are inside of the devil's fortress. That are being holed up by worldly wisdom, satanic wisdom there. And realize that we can't free them with worldly wisdom either. We can't really free them with clever methods. We can't convince somebody into heaven. 
And I think that's an important thing for us to understand as we go out and we are evangelizing. That we're telling people about Jesus is it's not a one size fit all, fits all. When we evangelize, it's going in the world and talking. Talking and listening to people and telling them about the love of Christ. If we don't love people, they're never going to listen to the message that we have to give to them. But we can't trick them. It's not with clever mes mes uh, methods. It's not worldly wisdom that's going to get somebody into heaven. But it's only when you're obedient to, to Christ with the Word of God, giving them the Word, and the Holy Spirit's the one that convicts the people, draws them to Christ. And we can't grow in discipleship either with worldly wisdom. We need the, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly where we all are every day when we go on the battlefield is we need our commander. We need to listen to our commander. Our commander speaking to our hearts. When we're allowing things into our heart that do not belong there, our commander is saying, stop! Do something about this. That is what the Holy Spirit is doing in our hearts every day. In the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, if you are overlooking this every day, you are going into the battle without a weapon. You are going into a battle without a weapon. Know God's word and pick up that shield of faith. Because those flaming arrows, I can guarantee you, are going to fly at you today. They're going to fly at you every day. There's so many distractions that come towards us. Confusion that comes to us every single day. Take up that shield of faith. Trust God. Trust your commander and what he's telling you to do. And pray. Talk to the commander. Talk to the commander. Know what your mission is there on the field because it is a satanic assault on the world. That's what we're fighting against. That's what's in the devil's stronghold, in the devil's fortress there. It's a satanic assault. And you know, today we live in what some people call an enlightened age where we kind of ignore the supernatural. Often we hear reports from missionaries that go into these third world countries that do not overlook the supernatural. And they have some really amazing experiences going on in these countries. But you know, we've kind of become blinded to supernatural, to the spiritual realm. But the spiritual realm is still very active in our world. We can see the fruit of it. We can see the fruit of it. And you know, I think the devil does a good job of desensitizing us to the things of the devil. Very good. Look at movies and TV shows. How many times do you see something with witches? How many times do you see something with magic? With the undead, zombies. You can turn to the Disney Channel and they have a show about zombies. Do you not think that they are touching our children's minds with these things? I'm amazed sometimes looking back at old cartoons that I watched and how many times witchcraft was just a prominent part of it. Satan is desensitizing us. He's helping us to ignore everything that's going on. You know, if you go to the store, how many items can you find with skulls printed on them? Why is it we have such a focus on death and destruction? The devil's desensitizing us to what's going on in the world. But it's a spiritual battle here. A spiritual battle. Look at verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not human but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. You know, when I, I've heard this verse many times, and I've thought about the strongholds as things that you know, we were dealing with, but I'd never looked at it in this way, because Paul's addressing these false teachers. He's, so in, in, he's looking at doing evangelism, making sure the truth is being teached. These strongholds is not talking about something that you're holding on to, but the strongholds is where the devil's at, the devil's fortress. We are going into battle against him there. In the movie The Untouchables, Sean Connery's character tells the lawyer on there to make sure that he has a gun. And the lawyer doesn't really want to have a gun. But Sean Connery's character says, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Think about that. You don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Because if you do, you're going to lose, aren't you? And that's what's happening when we try to bring worldly wisdom against the devil's fortress. We need the sword of the spirit. We need that gun against the knife fight there. You cannot fight the spiritual with human weapons. And we are waging war against a fortress of demons. Do you realize this is something we cannot accomplish on our own in defeating Satan and the things that are going there? So we have to draw upon the, the mighty power of God. Look at that. 
And not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Pulling down the devil's fortress. Exactly what's going on there. Mighty in God. You know, we shouldn't be addressing the demons in our own power. We shouldn't be addressing the demons from ourselves. We should be deferring to God. And using that sword of the Spirit and allowing the Word to defeat the demonic forces that are around us. The Word's power. You realize that that is the key right here to the battle is the Word's power. We overlook it. How many mega churches may have a pastor that preaches a sermon and doesn't even read the Scripture? They're going up there without a weapon. Without a weapon. But the Word's power is going to save some and kill others. But the Word never returns void there. This is where the battle's at, though, because we live in a biblically illiterate society. You realize the Bible is the most printed book of all time Yet there's many of us that have never read the Bible all the way through. We all forsake it to a certain degree, but we need to pick it up. We need to pick our weapon up as we go into this world, or we can guarantee we are going to be defeated. This is where the key is right here. We cannot be biblically illiterate. If we're on that battlefield, we've got to know what God's Word says, because human wisdom, satanic wisdom, is going to continue to go back against us, and if we don't know God's Word, we're going to be defeated. When Jesus was tempted by Satan, what does Satan use against him? The Word. Satan knows the Word. He twists the Word. He confuses people with it. But how did Jesus strike back at him? With the Word. With the Word. We've got to know the, the Word there. If we're going to be able to pull down these strongholds where evil is entrenched inside of the devil's fortress. This is exactly where the battle is at. This is exactly how the gospel was being attacked because the devil's fortress is strong. And inside the devil's fortress are lost people. Inside the devil's fortress are some of our family members. Inside of the devil's fortress are some of our friends. And maybe you're inside of the devil's fortress. Only God truly knows. But those inside of the devil's fortress think they are in control, but they're captive to sins. They're slaves to sin. That's exactly where they're at. To defeat the satanic lies of the world, we've got to share truth. We've got to use the sword of the Spirit. That is the only way we're going to defeat these satanic lies. And you know, these attacks that come from the devil's fortress. So as Christians, we're not inside of the devil's fortress. We're on that battlefield, and we are always being exposed to these flaming arrows flying our way. The attacks are trying to prevent our growth, trying to make it where discipleship really does not happen, that the body doesn't grow. We need to look out for each other. You know, that's part of the body of Christ, is we're looking out for each other as we walk into that battlefield. Do you pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ? Are you concerned about their souls? Are you concerned about the things in their life? We've got to step up because we cannot beat the things that Satan throws our way in our own willpower. There may be something that we're struggling with, some kind of personal sin that we're struggling with, and we've tried over and over again to defeat it, but in our own willpower, we are always going to lose. We have to draw upon the Holy Spirit. We have to listen to the Holy Commander inside of us and guide us into all truth. Looking at God's Word, and God's Word is going to defeat those things. Tearing down those strongholds. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Are we trusting God's power? Look at verse 5. Here's what these strongholds, what the devil's fortress is made of. So we need to cast down all these arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The fortress is made of false teachers. Paul knew false teachers very well. That's what he's fighting here in Corinth. The devil's fortress is made of false religions. And there's many false religions right around us. You know, the Jehovah Witnesses, they talk a good talk, but they're a false religion. They're all around us. All around us. This is what the devil's fortress is made of. Philosophies, theories, lust, biases, presuppositions. Basically, we're looking at the world through worldly wisdom, satanic wisdom. This is what the fortress is made of and what people are hiding behind. And as Christians, on the battlefield, when these arrows are thrown our way, he's trying to convince us that these things in the fortress are right. He's trying to confuse us. He's trying to distract us every day. But to make the right choice, we need spiritual discernment. We need to submit to Christ every day. Be in His Word and listen to what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us. 
because we need to tear down these strongholds, to fight against all these things. We need to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. We're not leaving anything out right here. Every thought in captivity, obedience to Christ, because He is the commander of the army. If you're going into that battle without a commander, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. Where's the commander pointing you to go? What's the commander warning you about? What's the commander saying, you get together with this person here. This is the body of Christ. We are in the Lord's army fighting against the devil's fortress there. Verse 6, it says, And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So Paul was ready to come to the church in Corinth. He was ready to purge those false teachers that were in there spreading the devil's lies. They were inside of the devil's fortress there. And those in the church of Corinth, if they were to be obedient to Christ, they would trust Christ for their salvation, trust the gospel, and walk in the Spirit, they were going to be ready to fight too. They were going to be ready to purge out these false teachers that are there. But you've got to know God's Word, the sword of the Spirit, because if you don't know God's Word, you are going to be fooled. You don't know who the false teachers are without God's Word. That is where we're at. That is where we're at. Are you ready to fight? Have you put on the whole armor of God as you walk out in the world, as you're on the battlefield approaching the devil's fortress because flaming arrows are coming your way? And are you ready to fight that satanic and human wisdom with the sword of the Spirit? God's wisdom. Truth. That's exactly where we're at today. The devil's fortress, his stronghold is real. The devil, the demons, and the lost are in it. And there's flaming arrows flying at us every day. We have a spiritual battle against the forces of hell. That is what we are walking into every day. You think life's tough? That's why life's tough. <laughs> we are facing the forces of hell every day. Spiritual battle. But the Word, God's Word, the sword of the Spirit destroys lies, destroys those attacks, destroys those false teachers, destroys false wisdom, satanic wisdom, human wisdom there. And we all have got to ask ourselves today, are we prisoners in the devil's fortress? Or are we soldiers for Christ? Are we on that battlefield ready to fight every day? Or are we walking in there unprepared? Are we all walking in there without the shield of faith? Are we walking in there without having the helmet of salvation? Know who we are in Christ? Are we walking in that battle, approaching the devil's fortress without a weapon? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We all have to make a choice each day. And we all have to decide if we're going to listen to our commander or not. But I can guarantee you, if you do not listen to your commander, you're going to get shot. Those flaming arrows are going to strike you. And you're going to be injured. And you're going to have struggles in your life. Because the devil's fortress is going to continue to try to attack us every single day. Let us trust God in all things. Father, I thank you for your word today. And I thank you that we know that we have hope in you and not in ourselves. I thank you that you have revealed to us the devil's fortress and what it's built upon. All these lies, these false teachers, these false religions, these bias, these lusts, whatever it may be that the devil's fortress is holding so many people captive. The lost world. And as soldiers of Christ, as we approach the lost there in the devil's fortress, we call out meekly at first, we give them God's Word, the sword of the Spirit. You do the work, Lord. You tell us to go out and tell people about You. But You do the work there, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You convict in a person's heart through the Holy Spirit. And if they do not listen, listen with meekness, help us to be bold. Help us to be willing to storm the devil's fortress with Your Word, not ill-equipped. And help us to always be listening to the commander as we are on the battlefield. The Holy Spirit dwelling within us, pointing us to Christ in all things, helping us to know what is worldly wisdom, what is satanic wisdom, what are these flaming arrows that fly to us. And help us to take up that shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And I pray that if there's anyone here today that has not accepted you, that you would just pierce their hearts today, Lord to help them to realize they are trapped in the devil's fortress and the only hope is in you, in Jesus Christ. And for everyone else here that may already be in the Lord's army, 
that if there's anything we have forgotten to put on today, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, our feet shod with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one, the helmet of salvation, or the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. If we have left any of those things at home today, that we would put them on right now, because they are flaming arrows flying at us. I pray for our families. I pray for our friends. And I pray that we just be bold soldiers in Christ in all that we do. Thank you for your mercies and your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brett's going to play just an, another verse there. If you'd like to come down and pray, whatever it is that the Lord's laid on your heart today, maybe it is that you feel conviction for somebody in your life, your lost family member, your lost friend, whoever it may be. Maybe it's even you that's in the devil's fortress. If you're on that field and you've been ill-equipped in battle, take up God's Word. The sword of the Spirit is always available to us. Be in God's Word. Know God's Word. And be willing to draw out that sword as we go into battle and take up that shield of faith. Thank you all for being here today. Let's close in prayer. Lord, I thank you for your merciful hand upon our lives. I pray for the lost people that are in our circle of influence. I pray for those that you want us to go to with the gospel. And I pray that we will be equipped as we go into the world. We all have some particular flaming arrows that are flying at us every day. And that we would just trust you with all that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.